Hello and welcome to our 2023 MBR e-bike of the year test and we've got quite the lineup for you. There are 10 contenders vying for the title. We've got bikes from Vitus, White, Nukeproof, YT, Giant, Specialized, Canyon, Trek, Mondraka and Cannondale. All the major motor brands are represented with Bosch, Bros, Shimano and Yamaha. And we've got mallet bikes, 29ers, coil shocks, wireless gears and electronic suspension. All told, we're talking £73,000 worth of e-bikes. As usual, we used Maxxis control tyres to keep the test as fair as possible. We also used Feedback Sports tools and work stands and weighing scales to weigh all the bikes and supported by Fox clothing as well. That's enough of the preamble. We have got a lot of bikes to talk about, so we're gonna get stuck straight in. So this giant, this is a really good looking bike, isn't it? Reminds me of a, an old 90s TVR with that like chameleon paint job yeah. and stuff. Super slick, I mean, giant makes super sleek bikes, full carbon frame. This is the Trans X Advanced E plus one. My God, that's a mouthful. It is, but like in simple terms, it's got 150 mil travel in the front, 140 in the rear. So kind of like their analog bike, um, 29 inch wheels, second lightest bike in test. And I suppose the thing that's kind of the, that's kind of pretty well hidden, although the down tube is big, it's got an 800 watt hour battery. So second lights bike, even though it's got the biggest, biggest battery, battery in test. Yeah. Wow. And um, it's also unique in that it's got the Yamaha motor Yamaha as well. Yamaha made it? motor for Giant. Yeah. I'd say the motor, the motor's pretty good. It's pretty powerful. Um, I wouldn't say it's as pokey as the Bosch motor, um, but it's got more. It feels like it's got a bit more grunt than the Shimano EP8. Like it's got the power switch on the top tube. So you've got, you go through your basic, your battery and your power levels are like LEDs here. And you've got a really cool little integrated in the grip, a little like toggle switch here for going up and down through the power through modes. The power modes yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty simple, pretty simple in that respect. Yeah, but I can, I can see a lot of cables and wires on this bike. Yeah, it's got Fox live valve. So basically there's a sensor on the fork. So the shock's kind of reading what the fork's doing and the suspension's reacting to the terrain. And it's been slimmed down a little bit so it doesn't have the big battery pack anymore because obviously it's all connected in with the e-bike kind of so system. Off. So the, the live, valve, live valve is basically there to try and put your suspension in the optimum setting for yeah. every little bit of terrain that you Abs ride. Absolutely. But it's really kind of like, it gets a bit lost in the mix here because there's some more things going on with this bike that are, I'd say more important to the ride performance. Okay, well, let's, what are they? Well, the key thing's the geometry. Mm. Um, this bike's got a, 474 mil chainstay. Wow, that's long. Long. That's really long. It is long. long. And, and I know it's a 29er, but white, as we'll see later on in this test, has able to have a relatively short chainstay still with a 29 inch rear wheel. Okay, so why, why do you think they've ended up with such a, a I long chainstay? I think part to do with their Maestro suspension layout. I think, it can, I think a lot of brands kind of have this thing where they want to keep their kind of design identity and then they have to kind of work it around a motor and it doesn't always fit in super well and it definitely doesn't fit in super well in this case. Okay. Uh, and so with a, with a big heavy battery up front yeah. uh, and a long chain stay, how did that affect the ride and the handling? Well, I mean, I've been doing Olympic weightlifting <laughs> recently. Yeah, trying to learn how to do it, yeah. But I cannot get the front end of this bike up. Well, wow. like, I can't do it. So there's no problems in weighting the front end then? No, <laughs> weighting the front end is really, really easy. And the thing is, there's a few things it's got a geometry adjuster, so it's got a little flip chip here. So it's, I've actually, the bike came in the high setting, it's gone to low setting, so that gives it a little bit of a rearward bias. I ran the shock a bit softer, I ran the fork a bit firmer. Probably what it needs even more is a shorter stem and a higher bar, because I kind of remember from the early days of 29, I mean, the chain stays weren't quite as long as this, but the front ends were really short, so they had a really forward weight bias. And basically, once you put a shorter stem on and get your weight back, you recenter yourself and then the bike's actually a lot more rideable. Whereas this bike, you're kind of like, it's almost like the geometry forces your riding position, which is great if you just want to ride around and cover distance when I mean, you've got a huge battery. What I noticed climbing on this, but when we did our climb test, 
I'd be halfway up the climb and normally I'd have a couple of gears left for the, for the final kick and I'd be pushing the shifter and there'd be, there'd be nothing left because it's got a 36 tooth chain ring and the bike's basically, it's almost to me, and maybe this is unfair to Giant, but it feels more like a European style e-bike tourer. It hasn't got rack mounts, it hasn't got a kickstand mount like some of the bikes, yep. but that's what it feels like in terms of its attitude. Yep. And I think it's basically, it's kind of missed some potential. I think if the shape was better, um, maybe, maybe if they went to 27.5 rear wheel, and then we could start talking about the live valve and how like the suspension works and all of those things, but they're all secondary really. It's also got a really long seat tube. Um, this bike comes spec with a quite, a, comes with an adjustable seat post. Um, not adjustable height, but adjustable drop. Yep. And um, we couldn't get it low enough. So we had, we had to actually get the seat post from the next model down yeah. to make this bike fit us. And I'm 5'11", so yeah. I'm pretty, all these other bikes fit me super good. Yeah. They're all large. Um, yeah. So it's not the most engaging No, I mean, it's a, it's a really nicely made bike. Frame super well made, like giant, great engineering. Like it's got crazy stuff where the cables go through the links and stuff. And it looks really cool. Probably be a mechanics nightmare, but like it looks amazing. It's super sleek. Um, but yeah, just, I think if you're, if you're gonna get a giant, you want to get the rain e-bike. And that's a mullet one, yeah, is it? Yeah, it is yeah. mullet. It's okay. got slacker geometry. It's mullet. It's, it's got quite radic. It's quite radically different to this bike. Cool. I rated it a seven. And I think like, it's not that that was generous. I just think the bike was basically a little bit of the odd one out in the test. So yeah. Okay. So, I mean, this is a Cannondale, but they've gone really subtle with this bike, haven't they? I've had to look like really hard to find out yeah. the brand name on it. Pretty that. stealth. Yeah. Yeah, this is the Motero Neo Carbon LT2. Oh my God. They <laughs> love it, don't they? They just love these, like a fake meme. Which, what do you ride? <laughs> oh, I ride a da 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 Long yeah, travel? Exactly. 170 mil fork, 165 on the rear. And so the coil shock, I think, is pretty fitting for a bike with this kind of attitude. Mm. And uh, I think, because they do a, a short travel 29er bike, don't they, yeah. as well? This, this is the mullet This, this bike. is the mullet LT. That version. makes sense as well, yeah, doesn't it? totally. Um, carbon front end, alloy rear, Bosch performance, CX motor, 750, what our battery? The big, the big guns in there. Big, big battery in this. You, you got, you've got, you got a lot of travel, and you've got a lot of power. Mm. That sounds pretty like a pretty good recipe then. It is a pretty good recipe. So this bike is seven thousand two hundred and something, um, but it's discount currently discounted to just over six. Um, so it's pretty good value. Yeah. There's one little catch with it though. It is the heaviest bike in test. Okay. Which you'd kind of expect. Well, you, maybe you wouldn't expect because it's got a carbon front end, it's got yeah. alloy rear, so you expect some weight saving there. And I don't think the carbon's been used for weight saving. I think the carbon's more about making this kind of stealthy, sleek. It's a good looking bike. Yeah. So there's a few little design features on this bike that are cool. They've done a bit of motor clocking. So there's a bit of inspiration from white there. So the battery sits low, so they've got the weight kind of low. They've also got this little kind of like reinforcing bridge here. Yep. It comes across the pivot, which we'll see later is basically straight off a YT. Yep. <laughs> and it's one way to help. It's not got, it's not got crazy short chainstays on this bike, um, but it's one way to keep the chainstays a little bit shorter and also reinforce that area, like around the, around the main pivot. So clocking the motor definitely helps this bike kind of keep the weight low and make it a better shape. But you got a kickstand mount and a key. So bike two your halves. It's kind of like a bike of two halves, really, isn't it? Because like this is super sleek. Mm. The keys are pain in the. I don't want a key other than an Allen key if you got to take a battery out. And like it's got. A, it's not only got a kickstand mount. It's got an old magnet on the spoke. Yeah, that's pretty old school. So isn't there's it? obviously some shared component parts, maybe, or from from other platforms, whatever they're used across the line. That's that doesn't. They've done a good job though. Um, the suspension's really effective. Like it's got a really nice feel to the suspension. It works really well. It's not just because it's a coil shock. I think they've got the kind of anti-squat and the progression rate pretty good on this bike. Um, so it feels really sensitive. There's loads of grip, which is great. Um, and it came with a 500 pound spring, which I'm 80 kilos. It's got a really cool thing on the shock. Like it's got the, you know, it's got the side yeah. gradients on the fork. It's yeah. actually got it on the shaft of oh, the yeah. coil shock. Cause 
getting your sag on a coil shock's a pain in the ass. Yes. Um, so that made it way easier. I mean, you still had to read it for me because I can't look, I can't see it because it's beneath me. I don't need to get a yeah, tape, you have measure, to get a tape measure, measure out, or, yeah. go between my legs and stuff. <laughs> and like, and like, so that was really cool. But when I rode the bike, I found the dynamic ride height, even though the sag was pretty much spot on, I found the dynamic ride height a little bit tall. Um, so I swapped to a 450 spring, um, which kind of, didn't really have the kind of effect I thought it would. It just made the suspension feel worse. Right. And I think what was happening was I was riding deeper in the stroke, maybe hitting the bump stop earlier and the suspension didn't feel as effective. So I'm back up to a 500, suspension felt better, weight distribution was good, but then I felt a bit tall on the bike. Yep. So I think what this bike is lacking is some kind of flip chip or a different link or, yep. I mean, it could kind of have something in there yep. or even on the like, like on the Giant and some, of, and some of the other bikes, they have it here, just to, I mean, it's a big gravity bike, yeah? Let me get low, let me get in the bike and yeah. just like, I mean, the bars are high enough, I just need to get my feet low enough. Yeah, and uh, didn't you have a bit of a struggle with the bars? Well, all the cables go through the stem. Right, so that's so not great for swapping it isn't. So stems. I want, when I went lower with the spring rate, I wanted to lower the bars, so I tried to take the stem off and I couldn't because the cables were tied here and, it wouldn't come off the fork. And, and then I realized actually, if I could take the stem off, the spacers won't go on top of the stem because the stem's angled and the spacers won't yep. sit flat. And I was just like, you know what? <laughs> I don't need any of that shit. Integration, eh? Yeah, seamless. <laughs> yeah. Seamless. Until but you yeah, want to change something. Good ride and bike, good value for money. Yep. Um, position's good on it. I just think even with the discounted price, I mean, you're getting a really good motor, you're getting a lot of power. It's a good shape. I think like the, the cheap, what we've noticed on a few of the test bikes is like the cheaper forks tend to feel pretty good until you hit them really hard and then they're a bit elastic. They're a bit like kind of rebound uncontrolled. This fork felt a bit like that too. Um, so yeah. I think, uh, I mean, a big travel bike like that, you, mean you, you might do some Alpine stuff where yeah. you need the pedal clearance, but you might also take it to a bike park exactly. where you want the BB super slammed. So, so a flip chip is, and a flip chip is really simple. Yeah. It's a really yeah, yeah. simple addition, you know? So they've got all this kind of cool looking design, just put a little flip chip on it. Cool. So what do we rate that? I give it an eight. Price is good. The suspension's good. It's got, a, it's got, the, it's got the motor you want. Yep. It's got the power you need. Big battery. You got, and, you, and it means you've got money to maybe upgrade the damper in the fork and ditch the bar and stuff. Yep. Well, you, maybe you actually, I say ditch the stem, but I'm just looking at the frame. Where do you put the cables? Yeah. That's a nightmare. Yeah. So yeah, that's not, that, that's not for me, that stuff. That no, no, but it's been uh, rammed down our throats. Yeah, totally. Like the, <laughs> like <But> yeah. the cables. <laughs> but yeah, pretty good, pretty good, good riding, good quality bike, rides good. Um, just needs to be, you just need to be lower and more in it. Mm. So this is a cool, cool looking bike. Uh, another twin link bike, Bosch motor, looks yeah. pretty enduro, doesn't it? Super sleek. Mm. Yeah, I really like it. And um, Mondraker were kind of ahead of the game with their lightweight, but full power motors, yeah. weren't they, a few years ago, yeah, sub yeah. 20 kilos. S super, super good lightweight bikes, yeah. And on this, they've shared a little bit of that tech, haven't they? The they have, it's still not, it's still, this bike's still 24, still over 24 kilos, not crazy light. Um, it's eight grand. It's the Crafty Carbon R. That's the entry level carbon. It's the entry craft. level carbon bike. Yeah. And there's like, it's in their kind of trail, enduro, all mountain sort of category. Yeah. yeah. 29 inch wheel front and rear, 164, 150 rear. Um, SRAM drivetrain. So Bosch motor, SRAM gears. So it's a pretty good combo, gears and brakes. And it's got the DB8s, which are yep. the, um, the mineral oil brakes, aren't it's they? It's the mineral oil brake, and it's got a, they've got a really, really light lever action, like really smooth, um, compared to like two of the bikes we have with Code RS brakes. They're, they're better stopping power too. I mean, they look a, they look a bit cheap yep. on an eight gram bike, yep. but they work really well. Uh, everyone that rode that bike remarked on how good yeah. the brakes felt. Brakes felt really nice. Yeah. So like, it's a really cool thing. I think the other thing that's, that's kind of neat on this bike, they've obviously got their forward geometry concept. So it's really not really a concept anymore. Um, their bike's not got the longest reach in test. Everybody else has caught up or superseded it or they've all kind of like leveled out roughly the same place. It's got a short stem to, to complement that. Um, they've gone for like a, a not, not an oversized handlebar. So like the mid, like a mid size. So the bar's got like a nice feel to it. The bike's got like a decent amount of flex to it. It's, it's got a nice, it's got a nice ride quality to it overall. Yeah. 
Uh, and I can see they've, uh, the, I think the only bike in test, which has got the, the Bosch top tube system controller and the, the wireless remote. There's obviously a bit of duplication with the top tube display and the Kiox screen. So you could kind of remove that and just have one or the other. If you want all your metrics then you need the screen, but ideally you'd kind of like Bosch to have a little mini screen like the Specialized has in here, but you know, they're kind of, most of the brands seem to be one step behind Specialized on that front. But it's been Bosch's real Achilles heel for years yeah, and now it's, it's better. Way better, yeah. Yeah, it's way, way better. Like the little control, like having no wire on the controller yeah. is great. I don't know how long the battery lasts on it, but it works really good. So yeah, you said the frame felt pretty good, yeah. like a uh, good compliance to it, but uh, what about the rest of the ride quality? The bike's, the bike's not quite balanced. Um, and I suspect that's because it's got quite a lot of anti-squat on the rear suspension. And the rear suspension's got like, it's, it's got good sensitivity, but it's got lots of support. But it's paired with the basic Fox 38 fork and the damper is quite open and free. So you've kind of just got this, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a disconnect because that's not fair. Um, you've just got a free moving fork and quite a stable rear end. So the bike kind of does tend to pitch a little okay. bit too much. Whereas what we get to, when we get to later, when we go into the Specialized, both ends are free. So the bike feels more balanced. This bike didn't feel quite as balanced. So really, I mean, you, you kind of maybe want to drop the higher spec cartridge, like the Grip 2 cartridge in here, which bumps the price up. Um, it's got a good pace to it though, this bike, it's fast. The Mavic wheels, super fast rolling, feel really nice. Um, I just think two things about it that I think the bike feels, a, it doesn't quite feel balanced and it feels a little bit tall. The BB heights, for the travel, the BB heights a little bit tall in this bike. So again, why is there no flip chip? Yeah, I mean, Mon Mondrak has traditionally been quite tall, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And that's why if you are gonna go for a Mondraker and you think you're in between sizes, go up, don't go down. Because I made that mistake riding one of their e-bikes last year where I went for a medium because I thought, well, you know, they're pretty long, so I'll just get a medium. And, you know, like the concept, the idea with e-bikes sometimes is I'll downsize because it makes it more dynamic. The bike was too small for me because of the height. Um, so a lot of guys, they mullet these. And that's one way to slacken it and low it and just go shredding on it. Yeah. So that's always an option for you too, but then you'll just have to bring your bike to, a, to your dealer and get the, get get the, the speed, speed limit corrected. changed for yeah. the smaller wheel, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I really like the ride quality of it, but a few things bug me about it. So again, rides a little bit high, wasn't quite balanced. And then it's got the cable routing going through the headset. Yeah. Um, and that's not as bad as it going through the stem, but it does make the, the SRAM shifter feel pretty heavy. Yeah. And the other kind of uh, less friendly aspect of that bike is that oh, you we almost can't forgot. remove yeah. the battery, yeah, I can you? forget that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't get the battery out. Yeah. So you've got, you've, got the, you've got the big Bosch power tube in here, 750 watts, yeah. you've got a load of power. Um, but if you need to charge it in your house, or if you're thinking of going racing, you basically got to swing, the, you gotta swing the motor out. Yeah. Pain in the ass. Yep. Um, yeah, so for some people, that I mean, they won't care. It's a deal it'll breaker. not be the geometry. It'll not be how it looks. Mm. It'll not be the cables in the hedge. It will be can't get the battery out. Not interested. Yeah. Yeah. Shame. Yeah. But it does. I mean, it's you can see why because it saves weight and stuff. But yeah. and other know, brands have managed to do this. Uh, you know, fully enclosed down tubes and a removable battery. And make so. it lighter than this bike. Yeah. So this is the first of our direct sales brands, yep. isn't it? Yep. Uh, this is the Vitus E Summit. Yeah, the VRX, top of the range bike, 5499. And that is exactly the same price as the one we tested two years ago, isn't it? Which pretty much the same bike. Yeah, but we made a one critical change, haven't we, from the one we tested last time? Yeah, we picked a different size. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the reason for that was, we, so we had a large last time and we couldn't get the bars low enough on it because the head tube was a bit tall. Um, so I was like, okay, well, let's just go down a size because I'll have a slightly shorter head tube. And then I got on and I was like, I mean, I actually put spacers under the stem and I was like, oh, maybe I'm going crazy. And then I had a look on the Vitus website and I go, oh, they do size specific handlebars. So the rise of the handlebar is size. So that actually made the biggest difference to the height of the front end was the fact that this comes with a lower right. rise bar. Right. So the rest of the bike, did it, did it handle, I mean, was there much of a difference in the, in the sizing? Like um, it did. How it rode? Yeah, obviously it felt a little bit smaller, mm. made the bike feel more dynamic. Again, it's a 24, it's over 24 kilos, this bike. Um, but we got to remember that it's got the Shimano battery inside. Yeah. So it's a 630 yeah. watt hour battery. So compared to some of the 750 bikes, it's got, that gives you 
big advantage on the scales. Yeah. It makes the bike lighter. Yeah, mullet bike, um, relatively short rear end. It's got the old like um, bridgeless seat stay assembly, keeps everything tight. Um, it's, a, it's a fun bike. It's, it, it was, it was, I was quite surprised because I thought, have they done changed the shock tune? Have they done other stuff to the bike? But just going down in size on this bike really made it feel more dynamic. Yeah. And I'll, maybe and it could just simply be the fact that my hands were in the right place, whereas they weren't on, on, on the large, on the size large. So yeah, this is one of the alloy frames, but it's still lighter than some of the carbon bikes, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, again, yeah. having the smaller battery really helps on that front. And then also too, the bikes were weighed with the stock tires. You put the lighter tires on, you, you, you really chip, you chip it away, yeah. chip, chip the weight away on it. Getting the battery out, it's got this cover on it. Um, so you've got to kind of loosen two of the bolts at the bottom, and then you've got to remove the bolt at the top, and then you've got to stick the Allen key in, turn it, and then you've got to hit the little release thing and the battery comes out. It's a little bit convoluted, but I've actually noticed that much as I kind of prefer the kind of integrated covers, I think this, this style cover seals the box better than when it's actually attached to the battery, like on the YT, so you don't get as much water in around the electronics, which is a good thing. Other key highlights in this bike, it's got powerful brakes, it's got XTs, like I really noticed when I was riding this bike back to back with the Canyon, which will come later, like this, the, you'd ride this bike, brakes super powerful, you get on the Canyon, and I basically go through the first corner, like I'd almost crash, just, yeah. just because I'd pull the brake with the same effort and the brakes just wouldn't work. Yeah, and I think we should say that actually, recently we seem to have had much fewer issues with Shimano yeah. brakes than previously. Than previously. Yeah, that, that kind of inconsistent bike point thing, they seem to have solved that, and again, this bike's got the older fork on it. Yep. It's not got the latest, but it felt really good because you're getting a proper charger damper with high and low speed yep. damp adjustment on it. And like compared to, so like this is the cheapest bike in the test mm. and compared to some of the eight grand bikes, this fork just smokes them. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. smokes them. Yeah, you yeah. really notice the, yeah. the cheaper suspension on the expensive yeah, When you bikes. want to ride hard, you really notice that having this, the, the, I mean, this is an ultimate fork. Yeah. Like one, you've got the, when you've got, okay, yeah, yeah. it's not the latest one, but it was the best fork yeah. um, 12 months ago. So, I mean, when you look at all of these things together and five and a half grand, you've only, sounds like the best bike, doesn't it? But, but yeah, <laughs> if you've only got five and a half grand, yeah. then this is a really good option, but there's a better option coming. Um, and, that, and again, the limiter for me on this one is, it's not, this time it's not the internal cable routing on the, on the headset, um, it's battery capacity. Yeah. It's a Shimano battery. And we know from riding the old, smaller Shimano batteries that even when you, you go to another brand with a similar capacity and you just get way more runtime from them. Shimano batteries, I think kind of, they're quite conservative with how, you, how, much you let, how, how much capacity you get from the battery. Yeah. So you probably get a load of charge cycles from it, yeah. but basically it means you don't get as long a burn time. And when I'm riding this bike, especially with the stock tires, with the kind of thicker casings and the softer rubber, you're just watching the clock the whole time. You're yeah. just watching the chunks on the little Shimano display, praying that they don't go red and they yeah. just die. And that, I mean, that's another issue actually. So you, you, instead of having a percentage, you just go in, in five chunks and you get to the last one and you could be between zero and 10. Yeah, You've yeah. got no idea. The so. thing is, I kind of, there's, there's something I like about it too, because it means I, I find it less, in, in a way it's less stressful for the first four chunks and then it gets really stressful. Whereas when you're on another bike and you're watching 98, 96, and you think, almost look down and you can see it going down, that feels more stressful. But what's cool with this too is it's got two modes on it. So it's got two profiles. Yeah. And because it's got the more expensive color display, yeah. you can actually just, without even connecting to the app or doing anything, you can just go in here, click, scroll through the, the menus and change the profiles. It's really yeah. useful. So if you want to go out for like a quick hour, just do hot laps, you have it in, in, in the powerful yeah. profile and then you just switch it into the energy saving one if you're yeah. gonna go for a ride with all your mates with 750 watt hour batteries. That's to work a bit harder. Well, you're gonna be working yeah. a lot harder. Yeah. So yeah, again, an eight. Good ride and bike. Like it's one of the best bikes, I think, if, you're, if you've really got a ceiling on how much you can spend. Mm. I mean, it's, it's a great package. So uh, the white E160 now, this is, uh, we, I tested this in the last time yep. we did this, and uh, it's really good to see they've addressed the, prob the biggest problem that was in that test, the criticism that I had in that test. Do you still have a swollen toe from that? Did it hit you? Did, did the battery hit you <laughs> in the toe? I think it just hit the, hit the ground. It was, it was someone else. Dent. It was one of the readers, one of the readers I think, got the toe hit with the battery. <laughs> there was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, they have addressed it. Um, it's actually got a really good system now. There's one Allen key bolt, you undo it, you pull the little plastic cover off here, um, and there's a little, there's a little, just a little lever. You tug a little, you, you tug a little piece, of, you tug a strap, it pulls a lever down, it releases the battery and just comes straight out. It's, yeah. it's probably the easiest system here. Yeah, that's really good. And yeah, I think really Bosch cool. has actually started to use that, that for- system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's super cool. And like the fundamentals of the, so this bike's changed. They've not just done that. Mm. When we tested it last time- 27 half 27 wheels, front and rear. rear. Yeah. yeah, it's now full 29. And what's really cool is a lot of people, like we saw at the beginning of this video, the giant with like a 474 chainstay, um, 29 inch wheel. Yeah, so this bike, 29 inch rear wheel, 445 chainstay. All right, significant difference. Yeah, then, it's pretty yeah. cool, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, it, it can be done. Yeah. And so, so that, so clocking the motor, not just kind of putting it like the way it's been designed, but taking it and flipping it around, not only allows them to put the battery lower in the frame to keep the center of mass low, it's, that's probably what's allowed them to tweak their suspension and get their suspension to work with a relatively short chainstay. So. Yeah, yeah. so actually multiple benefits from the way they've configured it. Yeah. So it's E160, but has it got 160 travel? It has on the fork. Okay. Yeah, so you've got Fox 38 up front. Again, White kind of knows what to spend the money on. It's got the grip two damper, so you've got the four-way adjustable damper in here. You've got the support in the fork, and you've got the adjustments. You can have it how you want it, but it doesn't have 160 mil in the rear. It's got 150 mil in the rear. Okay. And again, they've gone for the Performance Elite rear shock, so you've got rebound adjustment and you've got low-speed compression. So again, you can tune your suspension into how you want it. And it's quite a, because this is the top-end bike, it's quite a race-focused bike. So if you're going racing, you should in theory know what to do with your suspension. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and the adjusters will allow you to tune it, yeah. And that's not the only high-end stuff on here, is nope. it? You've got-, it's got uh, Axis, mm. yeah, you like trying shifting, wireless, great, one less cable to stress about, and it's super fast. Like almost, you just touch it, boom, and, and, and it doesn't care where you are on the cassette, it's changing gear no matter what, which is kind of really cool if you kind of come into something and you're like, oh shit, you kind of like in, you like maybe not in the right power mode or whatever, and you need to get up through the cassette really quickly. You can just go bop, 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 and it's like super fast. Yeah, yeah. really. The drivetrain no might not last very long. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> well, I think the drivetrain's actually still. It, it's pretty durable. Yeah, it's, it's surprisingly durable given how how quickly you can force a shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's it's a really heavy duty, robust looking bike, isn't it? It's the second heaviest bike. It's it's the only other bike in test that basically was over. 26 kilos, and the scales I had at work didn't go up to 26 kilos, so I'd have to take the front wheel off, weigh the frame and the bike, and then weigh the wheel separately, and then put the two weights together. Now we've got new scales. Now we've got the new yeah, feedback ones. Exactly. <laughs> we don't, I, it's one less thing to do. Isn't yeah. it? That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a heavy bike, but it's a solid bike. Again, their tire spec, their gears, their suspension spec, I mean, it's a good, it's a well-spec bike for the money. It's got the code RSC brakes. I mean, they're like, they are just, a, it's like, it's a, I don't even know why it shares a name with the RS brake, because they're totally different. They just feel completely different. Brakes are powerful. It's got good tires. I was going to say it's got really good suspension, but I don't think the suspension's as good in this bike okay. as the bike we tested two years ago. In, in what way? It's just not as plush. No. I mean, it makes the bike feel... It it's argu arguably makes the bike feel maybe more dynamic or gives you the sensation of it being more dynamic because the suspension's not as planted. Right. But I really like the, f I thought the suspension on the 27.5 yeah. bike was really, really good. It was, yeah. And I just don't think, and I think it gave that bike an edge that some other, that, that a lot of e-bikes don't have. And this one feels not as good as the old one. It feels better than some of the other bikes in test in terms of like its ability to, it's a really, it's more stable but it just doesn't track as well. That's my, that was my yep. kind of feeling on the bike. I just, did, I just didn't think, I think it lost a little bit of it's what made it special. Um, and it feels a little bit more similar to other bikes now. Okay. Um, and, and for a bike that looks very much like a sort of enduro racing e-bike, uh, there's, no, there's no chain uh, device. Yeah. yeah. And as we saw <laughs> yesterday, uh, the chain came off. Yeah. <laughs> every, yeah. So like every bike in this test, has a chain device. And I, I'm sure you can get a chain device for this bike for 20 quid, 30 yeah. quid or whatever, but it probably should, no, I'll, re, I'll rephrase that. It definitely should come with one. Yeah. 
Yeah, considering how hard you can ride these. Yeah, it's an easy it's an easy fix. Um, and as we know, your chain always falls off when you're racing. Doesn't exactly. it? Always when you don't yeah, want it to. You don't want it to. Yeah. I mean, and the fact is, it didn't the whole time we've been testing this bike, the chain didn't fall off until they put the camera on it mm. and we're videoing it and then chain <laughs> fell. I was like, what's that noise? And the chain's <laughs> dangling around the yeah. thing. So there's one other limiting factor on this bike. There is a there limiting factor. It's only available in three sizes. Yeah. Yeah, it's an alloy frame, full alloy frame. So you'd sort of expect it to be um Available maybe in more sizes mm. than like someone like yeah, Specialized. You're not, you're not paying for molds. Are you? How, how many yeah. molds? Specialized got six, six sizes. Six sizes. sizes. Yeah. There's actually another thing on this bike that I really like, but some people may hate, is that the BB is really low. Okay. So you need to be quite an experienced rider. You need to know like the problem with an e-bike sometimes is that you just pedal everywhere because you keep speed and yeah. like you keep moving. Um, this bike's got the little shape at link, yeah. so it's got a little offset bushing in here, so you've got two geometry settings. I ran this bike in the high setting and I'd still be rushing my pedals quite regularly. Okay. Um, I mean, the, the cool thing with a Bosch motor is you get that overrun, can't you? Yeah. So you can time yeah, your pedals. If, if, and... if you know what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, you've got a lot of overruns, you've got a lot of power. This is quite an experienced rider. I'm not saying you can't ride it if you're not experienced, but I think to get the most from it, you want, like this bike felt best when you're going as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, uh, so what was the rating on this? Eight. Another one. Well, a lot of eights. In there it. was a lot of I eights. I mean, the thing is, I'll explain that at the yeah. end because it's really hard when you've got lots of different bikes from different, well, different supply chain in terms of one's direct sales, one's like shop bought. You've got different battery capacities. Some are carbon, some are alloy. So, you know what I mean? It gets, it's kind of, you kind of wait till we get to the better bikes and then people will understand yeah. why. Yep. Yeah. Danny. Yeah. This was the winner last time round. 2021 e-bike yeah. of the year, yeah. Yeah, so you spent more time on this bike than me because you tested the, all of the shop bought bikes last time. What's Trek done to the bike in the last two years? Yeah, well, it, it looks pretty much identical, doesn't it? But yeah. it's not. They have lengthened the front end okay. on all the sizes. They've uh, given them a bit more room, so they've slammed okay. in that uh, 750 watt hour battery. Okay, excellent, so better range. Better range, they've given it a, a big 1.8 lower uh, head yeah. tube. So a little bit stiffer fork. Yeah. But every, well, everything else is basically the same. They haven't got rid of the kickstand mount. They haven't got rid of the lock for the battery. Oh, the so key. The, the key. key. Oh for the, my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so some annoying things that are still there. But they have messed around with the geometry a bit. When you actually go to the Trek website, it's super confusing because there's all these different generations. And price ranges and two for different colors and different stuff. Different colors yeah, as yeah. well. There's different prices for different colors. Yeah. Um, so there's the, the, the old version, which is the, the Gen 3, which you can get in alloy and carbon. And then this is the Gen 4, which I think at the moment you can only get in carbon. Okay. And the Gen 4 bikes have got this new sizing. Because that threw you a bit, didn't it, when you got on the bike initially? You're like, this bike's really big. Yeah, it's, it's, it's big. This, is, this large has got a yeah. 490 reach. Yeah, that's, a, that's the longest bike in testing. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's definitely big. Um, but the thing is, is that there's a, there's a big gap between sizes. So the medium and the large, there's like a 35 millimeter yeah. gap between the reach. Almost like a two size range jump. Yeah, uh, whereas, you know, the, the small to a medium is like 20 mil. And I think even the, the large to the extra large is about 20 so mil as well. Didn't so, they have an ML before? Or was that no. they never had an ML? They didn't have, because on their analog bikes, they sometimes had that kind of tweener size. Yeah, so they've taken, a, what I believe has happened is that they've taken the sizing from the slash, the new slash, okay. but they've, did, they've uh, eliminated one of the sizes, which is the okay. ML. On the analog bike. Yeah. Okay. So you have one less size to choose from, and it's yeah. right in the middle of the bell curve where most people yeah. are going to be wanting to look for the right okay. size. So. It's for a lot for a lot of people, or no, not a lot of people, but some people will fall fall through the crack yeah, yeah. and will be more comfortable on the older bike, which yeah. you can still get. You might still be able to find some yeah, in yeah. shops. So it's worth bearing in mind. But the other the other thing uh, as well that they've changed is that the new bike is compatible with the Bosch Smart system, yeah. whereas the old bike isn't. This bit's really smart, though, isn't it? That's great. <laughs> That's just there, just kind of like teasing you of what you could have had. What you, you haven't know? got. What you haven't got. <laughs> but you know, Danny, this is still, you know what, for me, I know it's not the sleekest controller, but it's got everything you need here really, hasn't it? Yeah, it's more compact, it's more discreet. But I think you're paying £8,075 for this bike. 
and they can't give you the latest, greatest little Bosch yeah, stuff, which money. is on yeah. other bikes. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so I think it's a little bit uh, kind it's a bit of tight. It's a, it is a bit, it's a bit yeah. Tight. And also, it looks a bit cheap, doesn't it? It does. I mean, the thing is, when I first saw this bike, it looks pretty flashy and that kind of does it, it kind of cheapens it a little bit but just to recap for anyone that didn't hasn't seen the test from two years ago how much travel does this bike have so we've got uh, 160 fork yeah supposed to have 150 on the rear mm -hmm. i actually measured at 139 okay so, so a it's a little uh, bit shy a little bit shy but yeah. to be honest like when you ride it there is no way you're it's going to be feeling char shortchanged on the it's travel. It's a charger, isn't it? It's a, it really is. It really loves going fast. It's super stable, like the because the that long reach combined with, I mean, it's a, an average length chainstay, 450 chainstay. It's not too short, so you actually feel like really planted on this really bike. Really centered on the bike. Really right? centered. Yeah. As long as you're in this kind of average height kind of yeah. area, yeah. if you're maybe a bit smaller, it might not feel quite so balanced, but. Yeah, when we rode it together, you'd fitted a shorter stem to it. Yeah, just with the, with the 490 reach, I just wanted to kind of chip it back a little bit, just to make it easier to pop the front end up, lift it and, and just sort of make it a bit more dynamic. And it, I only went 10 mil shorter on the stem, so a 40, and it, and it really made a big difference yeah. actually. Yeah, it will so do. definitely something to think about if you're, if you're thinking, you know, I want, I want a large, but I'm not quite sure whether I'm gonna be able to ride it aggressively yeah, yeah. enough. So when I rode this bike with you and you had that setup, I remember saying to you, like this bike's pretty much set up exactly how I'd have it. Mm. And I didn't, I, I'm 5'11", I didn't think it was super big. I just thought it was like super hard charging bike. Mm. It's got a low BB. Even though this bike, we gave this bike the same rating as the White mm. and the Mundraker, I think this is a better bike than, it does a few things better than both of those yeah, bikes. It's, it's kind of got the big hard charge and feel of the White, but your BB's kind of like, it's, it's not crazy low because it's got a bit less travel. It's better balanced than the Mondraker. It's almost an eight and a half yeah. if we were giving it's a really good. It's got really good ride quality. But it's really expensive. <laughs> yeah, it is. It it's is. not I mean, got very high end suspension on it. When you start riding rougher tracks, longer tracks, it gets really fatiguing. Yeah. So, you know, if you're really strong and fit, then you can hold on, but you, you will get tired quicker than on some of the bikes yeah, yeah, here. Totally. I mean, I noticed when, like on the fork, even when we kind of pop to do a jump or something like that, the fork would have a bit of, it's, it's not a hot, it's not a, like a metal on metal top out, but it would it's be, noticeable. it's quite noticeable. And then we'd, we'd dive into that section where there was kind of like moto bumps. The fork just felt like it was. Yeah, like pretty just, wild. Yeah, pretty wild. Yeah, pretty right. pogo -y. And And the bikes, the bike size came into play then because that's what allowed you to just go, well, just hold on. Yeah. And it works yeah, pretty good, doesn't that's it? it. While you've got the energy, man, you could ride this bike hard. Yeah. The other thing I noticed on this bike, so this has got the most, I mean, I know we're banging on about brakes, but brakes are really important on an e-bike. These have got the real basic codes. Mm. And the Code RS is supposed to be one level up. Rather, this is just the Code R. And these brakes were and the same as the ones on the Cannondale, were definitely better than the Code RS brakes on the yeah, bikes. Yeah, I think uh, they don't have the cam in them, yeah. and they're a little bit lighter action, so just, that just definitely helps. Like, it felt more powerful too, didn't it? I mean, you didn't, you didn't think you were gonna blow through corners on them. No, no. Um, I will say another, another little bit of a criticism on it is it's quite rattly, like yeah. the, the whole battery area rattles, and it's got this, uh, Bosch rail system. I know it's a Trek rail, but Bosch has also okay. got this battery mount system called a rail system. And that slaps around against the battery and the inside of the top tube, down tube, yeah. sorry. Um, and that's really noisy, really frustrating. So you, I've tried to dampen it down with, a, with some packing foam in there, but it's still quite a noisy bike. Can you hear it over the noise of the Bosch motor rattling when you're going with the freewheel? This one wasn't too bad. The Bosch okay. motor didn't rattle too bad, but yeah, uh, yeah it's just, yeah, I, I mean, some of the bikes are really quiet. And this this one wasn't more so quiet. So the other thing you did was you went to Bike Park Wales yeah. on these two bikes for some back-to-back, -back, and that's mm. why you know about the fatigue on the longer yeah. tracks, yeah? Yeah. About 100K in the back wheel started to basically uh, detention and was just slapping around. So had to put like a full turn on everything. Um, it's the only bike that had issues with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, so, it's a shop bot bike. You go back to your dealer, you throw your hands up in the air, Make a big fuss, they're gonna fix your back wheel for you. Yeah, right? I mean, other than that, actually, the, the, the free hub engagement was really, really good on this yeah, bike. The Bond Traeger. Yeah, wheels. So yeah, yeah. There's, there's pros and cons of the wheels, but I, you know, I, think, uh, I think it's just it's a bit overpriced. Yeah. Um, that's, that's where you're struggling. 
Um, other than that, though, yeah, I mean, I, it's a it's a great bike. It's people are caught up. I think is the is the key point here. Is that's it's why the rating is not quite as good as it was. Yeah, and and Trek have stayed. Obviously, they're giving you a bit more of a range and stuff, but they stayed pretty stationary with the, yeah, with the development stuff. of the bike. So it's not two in a row for the rail then? No. Okay. Pretty uh, fancy pants spec on this one, isn't it? <laughs> Amazing, yeah. <laughs> and it's six nine nine ninety nine. So look, quite a bit cheaper than most of them. A thousand yeah. pounds cheaper. The thing than most. is, I was kind of like, the price point for the shop bought bikes was like 8K. And I was like, well, it's not 8K, but it's got Fox factory <laughs> suspension on it. It's got an X2 shock. It's got, a, it's, got, it's got the top of the range fork. It's got Shimano XT brakes. It's, it's got an XT drivetrain. It's got a bike yoke dropper post. Yeah. It looks custom. It's, yeah. yeah, it's a really, it's an amazingly spec bike. So, I mean, it's, it looks like a kind of longer travel one it as is. well. It's, it's basically a motorized version of their enduro bike. Yeah. So it's called, the, instead of the Mega, yeah. it's the Mega Watt. It's a clever one. Yeah, yeah. Mega Watt, this is the factory spec, factory suspension. Um, it's running the Shimano EP8 motor, 630 watt hour battery. Yeah. So yeah, if you have a look here, similar downship shape to the Vetus, um, same cover, same battery. I mean, it's a sister company. So one's shop bought and one's direct sales. Yeah. So just some cost saving there. Why, yeah, why absolutely. Not? I mean, the suspension layout's different. Um, but they do share they do share a down tube and like the battery and where the motor motor goes in. Another mullet bike as well. Mullet, 170 mil, 170 mil. Again, I measured this one 165 on the rear. Comes up a little bit short, but still shits tons of travel. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And really good travel. Yeah. So although it looks similar in layout to the Vetus, it's got a different feel to it. It's got slightly different geo too. It's a bit kind of like this L is kind of in between the M and the L from the Vetus range. So like it fits really good. In fact, the numbers are pretty close to the specialized yeah. lever, which we'll get to in a minute, but it's just got a lot more travel. Yeah, and so was it the the quality of the suspension parts or the, the, the whole frame kinematics that Both. was, it was works a combination? Together. Works really yeah. good. It works really good as the system. They really nailed it. It's not super high anti-squat, it's plush, it works. You can go in to chop really hard, the bike just eats it up. Racers will like the smaller battery. You know, a lot of racers want two or three smaller batteries. They don't want to be carrying around a big 750 watt hour battery, basically, if they don't need it, because it's not enough to get them all the way around. They're going to have to change anyway. But for me, or for a regular rider that's going out on a Sunday, it's just not enough. I think if they were doing this bike again now, they could have maybe like a mixed capacity. So you have like an adapter that goes in the frame or an adjust, like you kind of have an adjustable mount for where the, where the battery slots in. So you could offer like a, a 500, a 600, a 800, a 700, whatever, just so you could choose what you wanted on your bike, would be a really good feature on it. Yeah, yeah, just the kind of modular system. Yeah, yeah. yeah, great bike for the money, really good ride quality. Not maybe one of the best bikes for climbing. Um, it's just got a lot of travel. It's not got a crazy steep seat angle. You've got a little climb switch here on the shock, so you can kind of flip that up. It helps, helps it sit up. You got a load of grip though. You got like a, a semi plus, like a two point, I've put a 2.6 tire on the rear. It comes with 2.5 front and rear. Um, also it comes with double down casings. Um, so it's got max grip front. Yeah. It's got slow tires on it. Um, and like, again, they add weight to it. So you can make the bike lighter. You can make it, you, you can increase your range yeah. and make it lighter if you're sensible with your tire specification. Yeah, yeah, no, it makes a big difference, yeah, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, you can tune it to where you ride kind of thing. So like if you're riding around Surrey, you, you don't, probably don't need double down. You definitely don't need them front and rear. No. Yeah, so you can maybe get away with one in the rear, go up up one level on like the grip from the compound and you're just gonna get your battery to last yeah. like 10, 15% yeah, longer. Yeah. So was that the biggest kind of uh, Yeah, that's the only on thing for bike? me really about this bike. I don't care that it's got an aluminum frame, not a carbon frame. I think the pricing's really good, the shape's good. There's nothing on it you need chain to change. I mean, it's got normal cable routing. It doesn't go through the head tube. That's a bonus on this compared to the Vetus. Um, you're getting great wheel set, DT Swiss wheels, Fox factory suspension. Um, and even the Shimano motor, although it doesn't have the power that you get with the Bosch, when you're climbing and stuff, it's got good support in the motor still. There's good traction. You can feel, you can really, you get a really good feel for like what's happening at your tire. Yep, if you ride in really kind of steppy, awkward terrain, the overrun doesn't have the same kind of like push that you get from the Bosch system, and it definitely isn't as powerful. Um, 
but it's a, it's it's a it's a good motor. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah. you've got the rattle, obviously, but again, yeah. you've got some Bosch rattle too. I mean, the only bike that doesn't rattle is a Specialized. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and and if you you know you run it in boost, it it feels it feels great. It feels yeah. strong. It, the totally. problem is then you're you're into your battery range again. Yeah. Aren't and you? again, so, again, it's got exactly the same system running the same display that we talked about on the Vita. So you can again, it's it's been tuned for like max power yeah. or range. So you can swap, two profiles. Swap between the profiles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean. You don't need a second profile on a bike when you've got a 750 watt hour battery. You just go out and ride it whatever mode you want. Yeah. Anyone that's coming into e-biking now, you're pr and, and you're not you're not coming into it as a e e e w s racer or whatever. You're basically going to want a bigger battery. Yeah. I mean, like we went through those growing pains. You yeah, shouldn't and, have to now. <laughs> yeah. Totally. And, and you know, and, and the thing is, maybe two years ago, a two battery system was kind of okay because Specialized was the only brand with a big battery. Now, lots of brands have big batteries. The battery's not what you're looking at. Yeah. And you're still looking at the battery on this bike. Yeah. yeah, I gave it another eight, but it's got Fox factory suspension. It's got really good ride quality. It's good value. The only limiting factor here for me is, again, battery capacity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this was the winner of the uh, direct sales test two yeah. years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. YT decoy. Absolutely. And if it had to come with this battery here, with the little belly underneath, as standard, it might have been the winner again this year. <laughs> so that's the big capacity one, isn't it? That is the big capacity battery. So the bike comes standard with a 540 watt hour battery. And then they offer this as an optional upgrade for like 899. So this is one of the oldest bikes in the test, as in it hasn't, the frame hasn't changed. It's made from carbon, yeah? So it hasn't changed since they launched it. Um, and it just looks like it was always meant to be there. I mean, that's really clever, the way they've yeah. actually just made it bulge yeah. out. They've basically added the cells at the bottom and not all the way. So basically you don't have all this weight of a battery at your head tube, it's all down low. So like, it's super yeah. cool. Yeah, that's clever, it's very yeah. clever. Just want to <laughs> wait until it just comes with well, the bike. Well, basically, yeah, because that's going to affect the price. So instead of the bike being the retail price plus the price of the battery, once they integrate it, it's only going to be a couple of hundred quid more mm. than the current than the yeah, current yeah, bill. Yeah. So yeah. once that happens, I mean, is it a deal breaker? It is if you're looking at, at, at the pricing on all of the bikes and and you want like a you want a plus 700 watt hour battery capacity. Yeah. So has anything else changed on this decoy from like the one we tested two years ago? Um, well, obviously this one's, it's a slightly different specification. Um, yep. This is Core 4. So you've got the, again, you've got Fox factory suspension. You've got the four-way adjustable damper. You've got the four-way adjustable shock. I mean, for a full carbon bike, it comes in five sizes. They also do a full 29 inch front yep. and rear version as yeah, well. Yeah, different travel. Um, 29 yep. rear, yeah, yeah. Um, like there's nothing on this bike that you need. To, I mean, it's got everything you want. Like it's amazing. it's pretty amazing. Like if I mean, it just if everything it's got everything you want apart from the battery that you want. <laughs> it still rides as good as the one we tested two, yeah, two great, years ago, which great, is you know, it was amazing, wasn't it? I mean, it still looks really good, yeah. it still rides really good, it's got loads of really good stuff on it. It's a really good bike. I mean, I I, I really like riding this bike. And if YT just kind of not kind of it's kind of like a patch, the upgrade battery, and if they're just going, okay, you know what? We're a bit behind on the battery capacities, boom, all bikes come with this. This could have been our test winner. Yeah, yeah, simple as that really, yeah. isn't it? And instead, it's another eight. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a few other little things about the bike that I really like. Um, it's got the code RSC brakes, so like super good brakes. It's got Renfla cockpit, like it's Gucci, yeah? Um, you're getting the really good suspension. It's got a geo adjuster. I've got, I've got it in the slack setting here because I just like the feel of this bike in the slack setting. The seat angle, I'd say, I. I'd say if YT were redesigning this bike now, they'd probably steepen the seat angle up a little bit just to improve it for climbing and stuff. But the chain stays are relatively short. You can manual it pretty easy, even with the big battery. It still feels really dynamic. It's, really, it's a really good fun riding bike. Mm. And that's, you know, that part of that is the clever way they put the yeah. extra cells down the bottom. Exactly. Yeah. And also it looks stunning. It's a really good looking bike. It's a really good bike. Yeah. So, but yeah, again, just need that battery. The one that's in it now needs to come with it. Yeah. Yeah. So Danny, this is the second bike that you spent a ton of time on. Um, they've really stepped it up this year, haven't they? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I've spent a lot of time on this bike, not only in this test, but yeah. in last year as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the last, so when we did the last test two years ago, they literally, a couple of months after the test came out, they brought out this new Gen 3 version. Yeah. And they pretty much answered all of the criticisms we had of that bike, which was outdated sizing and geometry. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was short, it was too steep. There was a lot of weight on the front. I'm gonna stop you there because they were the only criticisms because Specialized were streets ahead in terms of battery capacity and system integration. Absolutely. They, you know, their uh, slogan is not innovate or die for no exactly. reason, isn't it? It's And they've upped the ante again, haven't they? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, so they had the 700 watt hour battery back then, yeah. but now they've got this new uh, Mastermind TCU controller on the top tube, which is, gives you all of your information in a little, uh, little like color display. By far the best system here. By, By far. far the best. Yeah. You've got the, the really discreet little control unit on the remote on the bars, and you get, with the microtune, you get 10 different power settings. So why have go four? Through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. But it's, it's really useful for it's, it's cool. adapting your power to get di different range, you know, to, yeah, yeah. to whatever the ride is, you can make sure that you've got some battery left at the end of the ride. That's great. It's also got, still got a really silent motor that's yeah. the, the quietest here. So the key, I, I, want, I want to make a differentiator here though, because when you're freewheeling, okay, we're not just talking about motor noise when you're pedaling, we're talking about like freewheel rattling the motor. Exactly, yeah. That so is, when you're coasting and you, your pedals are level, but you're on rough ground and you don't get that any rattle at all, it's, com it's completely so, so solid. Could, that was the big thing that stood out for me riding this bike compared to all of the other bikes that I tested was I could hear my tires. Mm. I didn't hear the clack, 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 clack. I didn't hear the, I didn't hear the freewheel rattle. And then you start looking at other little things. There was another little rattle on this bike that we couldn't find. We didn't know if it was the SWAT tool, if it was a cable rattle. Whereas on all the other bikes, all that stuff's just drowned out like on a motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a bit of bushing. There was a little bit of loose bushings on this fork. Okay which made them like even freer yeah. and uh, made them incredibly supple, but there was a little bit of rattle there. Slightly slimmed down fork to the Levo Gen 3s that I've ridden before, yeah. which have been 38s on there. And I mean, you've tested that bike as well yeah. and you complained about the, the, the whole chassis being a yeah. little bit too harsh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and possibly, you know, this is one of the reasons on, on this bike where it, we, we had none of those issues. It felt really quite compliant. Isn't it interesting that the two best bikes in test both had 36 forks on them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, like, do you know what I mean? and <laughs> you know we didn't complain about any kind of stiff lack of no. stiffness with them. So I mean, uh, we're not a hundred kilo guys, no. so that's obviously that makes a difference. So if you're a hundred kilo dude, then yeah, maybe you want a thirty-eight for sure. But and they're only one sixty travel, so they're, yeah. they're within in the kind of parameters. Yeah. So so let's back it up to what you you were you, you, you said basically they changed the geo. What did they do? And let's talk a bit about all of the adjustability. So you, they got, they went really quite aggressive with the with the Gen 3. So it's adopted the S sizing mm -hmm. model from the old Stump Jumper Evo that's yeah. now kind of widespread through the range. So you get six sizes, S1 to S6, which is amazing. You know, hands down beats all of the bikes yeah, here. Yeah. If you, well, it just gives you choice because it's got a really short seat tube. So I could go, I could ride an S5 or I could ride an S3 and this yeah. is an S4. Yeah. Um, it just opens up opportunities for yeah. people, yeah, but not really only that, there are six different geometry settings. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Three head, head angle settings and two chainstay slash BB settings. So, you know, you can, and that gives you the option to, let's say, um, you know, you wanna run the longer chainstay, which gives you the, the, the lower BB, mm -hmm. um, then that will have some knock-on effect of your head angle it will slacken the head angle a little bit. Maybe then you can steepen up the head angle if the you want. Put the headset cup in, stop yeah. it around. It would, you know, it will shorten the reach. Yeah. So you can actually yeah, it's really, really fine tune the bike yeah. to your fit and your preferences and your, your, the terrain yeah, you ride I think on. the only thing it's missing is the flip chip and the yoke, which they introduced on, reintroduced on the new SL. Exactly. So you could have the, you can have short and high or short and low. You can, you get, it gives you even more I options. I think that's the one missing setting is the short chainstay and the low, low BB, BB because the BB height is actually not super low on this. It's, it's kind of in the middle of all these bikes. So I ran it in the low position with the long chainstay. Yeah. Um, and the chainstays, you, you kind of think of specialized having really short chainstays, you used to, typically used to have them. Actually, this one was kind of in the middle, like 447 with yeah, the yeah. long chainstay. So yeah. 
that was a setting I would have used if I could have it. But the bike we tested before, the Gen 2 was 29.29, wasn't it? Yep, that's right. So this is a mallet bike now. Um, makes a lot of sense. It's a, it's a really fun, really agile bike to ride. Um, really playful. I think a lot of riders could get on it, whatever their skill level, and have a lot of fun. Uh, and it, it, you know, you you maybe get off the trek where you're kind of it's like a juggernaut and you're really kind of monster trucking down high speed trails. Mm -hmm. On this, you're just like flicking through turns. It's really exciting to ride. Do you think it's um, so? When I rode this bike with you, I was like, I almost felt like I could go up a size. And that's the yep. beauty of the S sizing is I could go up a size yep. if I wanted because they have it there. Because I thought with the with the basic, it's got a, it's got a rhythm fork. Yep. It's like the base. It's the most basic mm. fork box do. Um, it's got a really free damper on the shock, yep. and I think I actually really like the feel on the rear. But I found that the I found the bike maybe a, almost for me a little bit too open, and that's why I wanted some extra length in it. Um, but that's the trade off I think you get for the extra comfort versus the extra stability. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's not a small bike. It's still no, totally. 1270 totally. mil wheelbase or something. Uh, it, it, it is exceptionally free. And, and when you do start getting into really quite kind of rough, challenging trails or really speed, dynamic or where the, ch the terrain changes really quickly, it's like bouncing a, yeah. a lot. It's a bit chaotic, isn't it? But I mean, it was pretty wild down some of the pretty trails wild, we rode. But, yeah. <laughs> but the bike, like the chassis, the kind of the, the size in the geo, I mean, you can, you can cope with that. Um, and there's a lot less feedback coming through the chassis than, than a, than a yeah. couple of the other bikes. Yeah, it so. felt good. It felt really good on the edge, didn't it? Mm. Like when you're, it felt like the suspend, the, the flex and the overall feel felt good really edge to edge mm. when you were turning like this on like off camber routes and stuff. There's another complication to this bike, which, which is that the, the, the original retail price of this is 8,250. I set the price point of the test at 8K basically mm. for the shop bought bikes. Yeah. And so you do get a, a lovely carbon frame, but the parts on it are not that amazing, really. You, you kind of probably looking at wanting to upgrade, as you say, maybe the damper, yeah. maybe the wheels at some point in the future, the brakes are really not that oh, great. Oh, the brakes are pretty poor, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. so, you, you know, at 8,250, you're like, well, oh, really? Yeah, it's too expensive. It's, it's kind of like you're buying a rolling chassis, yeah. but specialized being specialized at the moment it's discounted to 6600 yeah and Which, that makes it a lot more palatable at eight grand i'm not sure if it had got a nine rating but at that at, at this price all of a sudden it's com it's competitive with it's competitive with the direct sales brands it is yeah, yeah. Uh, it's pretty astonishing price i mean it, it Specialized said they're holding this prize through the summer. Okay. So uh, i guess you just need to be quick get in there get one uh, yeah. if you if you're interested and like, for, like, it's pretty well known that the motor on this bike, the bros, the, spe, the bros make the motor for Specialized and, it, and it's had a big reliability issues in the past, like high, very high return rate. What's the reliability been like on the latest version? So far from personal experience and from talking to dealers, it's been really good. Um, so they beefed up the, the belt in there. I think they, detuned the power a little bit okay. or the, the sort of the immediate response from the power because this bike's got one of the highest torque ratings hasn't it yeah it's 90, newton, 90 meters. newton meters um yeah. you know when you ride it it doesn't feel dramatically uh more punchy feel, than any it, of the it others doesn't feel any, it doesn't feel more powerful, powerful than the bosch motor does it no I, in fact i would say it feels a little bit less mm. powerful um but maybe a little bit better on the steeper climbs but but uh, yeah, not, not in terms of the kind of, when you're chasing someone on a Bosch motor, you, I, I tend to drop back a little you're bit. You're working hard. Um, yeah. But it's still, a, you know, it's a really good unit. And I, th I think now the reliability issues seem to be behind it. Okay. Um, so again, this is a nine rating bike and that's reflected in the discounted price. The discounted price, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's really, it's reflecting oh. the, the spec level. You've forgotten something. Probably. <laughs> It's the lightest bike in test. It's a, it's a very it's good point. A bit, I mean, we, we weighed at the start of this, mm. at this, at this test, we weighed the heaviest bike and the lightest. I mean, we, we weighed all the bikes, mm. but just for this video, we weighed the heaviest and the lightest. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, 22 and a half kilos. Yeah, that's with, pretty with light. A, it's really light with a big battery and not very high end parts. No high end parts. Yeah. <laughs> so this is another good point that you've reminded me of is that there's an alloy version of this bike. Okay. It's about a thousand pounds cheaper, mm. only weighs 800 grams more mm. for the okay. frame set. So it will 
you could save money, you could get that bike and it'd still be lighter than most of the other bikes Bikes here. in this test. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? I mean, and even just the proportions on the frame and stuff, I mean, that bike, like it looks sleek, it's a good looking bike. Um, And I, I'd go as far as to say, I prefer the rear suspension feel on this bike with the basic damper. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Yeah, yeah it's it definitely like I was really surprised. Yeah, like, I thought, oh, oh, hold on a second, maybe it's not anti squat that's the problem. Maybe it's not progression. Maybe it's just with the X2 in there. There's just too much damping. Yeah, and I also had problems with the X2 leaking air um, yeah, from yeah, from the, 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 the can as well. Too, so, yeah. so yeah, maybe this yeah. is a better option. Yeah, but definitely room for improvement on this bike, and with the slashed price, you've got a bit of budget to play with. Absolutely. So they say that imitation <laughs> is the sincerest form of flattery, don't they? Yeah, it's pretty funny that, isn't it? And yeah. uh, this canyon has been well and truly inspired by the bike we just took off a stand, the, the Levo. So much so that the very first time I rode one of these at the launch in Italy, I basically hit the motor cover on a rock and the magnetic cable connector popped out just like it does on the Specialized. Yep. Quite amusing, yeah. <laughs> but hey, why not? Yeah. I mean, and they've done, they've done an amazing job. Like, again, this is a Gen 3 bike. Yeah. Um, mullet design. Um, and they were there, and they were there at the start with yeah, the mullet. mullet. Bikes, they did. They were the they, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the, the original bike we tested, so not, not the Gen 2 that we did in the test mm. last time around, but when we did our the first yellow e-bike and black test. with yeah. the external it, battery. It was amazing. Brilliant bike. Amazing bike. Yeah. Like, killer value for money, really good ride quality. This bike is killer value for money. It's 6'2" full carbon frame, good components, Fox 36 Fort, grip two damper, streets ahead of what you get. So although we're kind of looking at, we're saying Specialized is in a similar ballpark to the, with a discount to the Sales Direct. I mean, this bike's got Axis on it and it's got a grip two damper fork on it. It's yep. pretty far ahead of the Specialized yeah. still. Um, it's got 150 mil, it's, so, so I tested this bike, the 2023 version which is this bike with 150 mil for 155 on the rear, but Canyon has just brought out the updated version and they've gone to 160 mil travel on the fork. Yep. Now that's got a plus and a minus to it. The plus point is, is the BB is quite low in this bike, which again, I said, I really like, not as, not as crazy low as some bikes, but you're definitely in the bike. But as a result, the bars can feel a little bit too high. Yep and the 164 is going to just raise the front end up. It's going to slacken it a little bit more too. So you may need to fit a lower rise yep. bar if you're just kind of like, if you're on the cusp of sizing. Yeah. So one of the one of the really neat things with this bike, isn't it, is the battery. Yeah. I mean, or the batteries. Yeah. Plural. Yeah. yeah. So the bike comes stock with the 720. Um, you can take it out. So it's a third party battery, it's isn't it? It's a third party battery. You can basically take it out and there's space inside the down tube to fit a 900. Which is mental, isn't it? Well, I mean, I think the thing that's most mental about it isn't that, that the range is just mm. massive and then you basically you just do two rides on a charge, basically, is the fact that if you're smart when you swap batteries and actually just add a little bit of extra air to your fork, because what happens is all of the extra weight of the batteries right behind the head tube, it's not quite a kilo, but it's close, yeah? Um, and it all sits on your fork. So basically, I think, well, the mistake a lot of people make is they put the bigger battery and they go, oh, it's hard to lift the front end. You go, yeah, of course it's hard to lift the front end because there's more weight there and your fork's lower. So you need to put more air on your fork to get your riding position to come back to where it was before. And then if you do that, it's pretty hard to tell it's in there. I mean, they've really done some wizardry with that. Yeah, they? and I think that's a lot to do with the suspension behavior. The bike, it tracks really good. It's poppy, it's fun. You're low, you're in it. It's not got a crazy long back end. It, they've done everything right. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's a, again like in the mold of a Specialized, a really yeah. agile bike. Yeah, maybe it, even a touch more agile. More agile, but also with the fork, with the better fork on the front, it's also got more stability. Definitely. Definitely. So it's kind of best of both worlds. Looks really good too. You can have a super big battery. You can have a normal battery. You've got loads of range. I mean, obviously it's a price pointed bike, so there's a few little things about the spec, mm. like the Code RS brakes. They're pretty shit. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, when I was back to back testing, so this is in the direct sales category, I was back to back testing this bike with the YT and the, the Vitas. 
and I'm not joking, I'd get on it, I'd forget that I got on it, I'd drop back into the same trail, I'd come to the first corner, I'd nearly go straight through it every time. I'd be like, oh shit, the brakes don't work. You get used to them. I mean, mm. you can get stopped, but it's, it just, it just yeah. needs more powerful brakes. Yep. And the other little thing about the bike that stopped it getting a 10 rating is it just needs a faster engaging free hub on the rear. It's just a bit, you notice it when you, when you ride it with the other bikes in that category, it's just a little bit sluggish to, to kick in on the power. And I just like it to be a little bit more snappy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, in terms of criticisms, yeah, that's all I got. I mean, it's interesting riding this bike because we rode the, the CFR model, didn't yep, we? Yeah, higher Which spec is, bike. It's got like carbon wheels, carbon bar, a slightly uh, kind of higher modulus carbon frame as yep. well, hasn't it? Got, got higher spec suspension on higher the rear Higher spec too. suspension. Yep. And it felt completely different, didn't it? Yeah, so it did feel different. And I actually rode both. I took the wheels out of that bike and rode them in this bike too. And that's when I really noticed the difference on the free hub pickup because that yeah. bike had much faster free hub pickup. And I think a lot of it was coming from the carbon wheels, a little bit from the suspension, a bit from the carbon wheels, um, and maybe a bit from the frame too. It's hard, it's hard to say when you've, got like complete, when you've got a lot of different components. Both bikes have got really good ride characteristics though. Um, but if you want to save weight, like the, the, the CFR bike's like super light. Yeah. This bike's just over. 20, also, this bike's you, just over twenty-three. If you want to save weight, you could put the smaller battery in. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. eight hundred grams difference or yeah. something. It's, yeah, it's close. Yeah, it's nearly yeah. A, it's nearly a kilo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one more one one thing about this bike, I think that really differentiates it from the um, the YT, is that when you the power button's here, and it's not really it's not a wired in power button. Mm. It's just like a little push button that pushes on the back on the button yeah, on the, the battery inside the down tube. Yes. Yeah. So it's all sealed. There's no, clever, right? there's, no water to, yeah. there's no water to get in the wiring because one of the issues with the YT that's, that's pretty much like if you wash it or if you get it too wet or if you turn it upside down, it's wet, water gets in, it gets in here and then basically the thing doesn't turn on. Yeah. Um, that's not a problem with this bike at all. They're basically just like yeah. going rem- around that issue. Removing um, the battery is pretty easy. Just flip it upside down, take the this yeah. cover off. Yeah, it's pretty good. They've got two little magnetic um, things for that's holding really it. That's really neat. I mean, I'd have liked it if they just had one bolt yep. to hold the battery because yeah, yeah. I think two is just like belt and braces, but they've got those little magnetic yeah, that's tabs to yep. basically attach it to. Um, I mean, really, in terms of ride quality, the seat angle is nice and steep, so it's, it's really good for climbing. The, the, the reach is really generous on it. The cockpit's good. Mm. They just nailed it. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and the only reason why it didn't get a 10 rating for me was the brakes. I mean, if they'd actually down spec the brakes yeah. to codes, just yeah. code R's, it could have been a 10 rating yeah. bike. They also could have had a 10 rating bike. <laughs> yeah, well, actually they could have never had it if they'd have just come out with the, the Strive On like three months ago. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, the brand new Strive On, it pretty much ticks all the boxes, doesn't it? Yeah. Bosch motor, carbon frame. Yeah. Enduro Geo, uh, two battery sizes, yeah. all the like the top tube display, pretty Every, much everything you want. Everything you want at a really good price. Yeah, it's a re- it's a really competitive bike, and and again, that's why this bike didn't get a ten. It's because there was a few little things about it that just stopped it being like, oh, this bike's completely dialed. And we've been saying for ages, like the first direct sales brand to come out with a Bosch equipped bike, because a lot of people will just decide. A lot of people look at this bike and go, I don't care how good you say it rides. I don't want it because it's got a Shimano motor. I want a Bosch motor. Yeah. And now yeah. Canyon go, hey, you want a Bosch motor? Here you yeah, go. Yeah. There's the Strive. Yeah. So that could be, in theory, we haven't tested it yeah. yet. Watch this space. But it could be the 10 bike. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope you found it interesting listening to some of the insights uh, that came out through the testing process. If you want to read the full tests, you want to geek out on all the numbers, we've got the geometry, we've got the weights, we've got the specs, all of that's in the magazine and on the website, mbr.co.uk. Check it out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.